Hiya Tank, we're back at Patriot Engineering today and we're crushing the samples from our second round of dry pour versus wet mix strength testing. If you've not watched the first round of sampling or any of the other videos leading up to the test, those can all be found on my dry pour concrete playlist. In the first round of testing we learned that moist curing is very critical if you want to get to the rated strength of the concrete you're pouring. This goes for wet mix as well as dry pour. Let me say that again. This goes for wet mix as well as dry pour. You have to moist cure if you want to get to the rated strength. Okay, information we found indicates that concrete that is not moist cured for at least three to seven days will only reach 50% of its intended strength. Since we did not moist cure the first round of samples, our test results confirmed that data. Our 4,000 PSI wet mix samples broke around 2,000 PSI. Our dry pour samples broke at half of that pressure. So we wanted to try to figure out why our dry pour was not as strong and we really wanted to find out why our wet mix was not at the rated pressure. So our observations from the experiment were you have to moisture cure we also thought that the wet mix concrete may have been mixed up too soupy, causing it to be weaker. We noticed we didn't rod the samples sufficiently into the molds, so our samples were not uh, smooth and pretty on the, on the outside. Um, on our dry pour, we didn't pack the powder in as tightly as we could have. That was because we wanted to leave headroom in the molds to allow for watering. And we also found that the dry pour had a disadvantage in this uh, sampling method because you could only get water in one end of the mold since it's a plastic mold. So it wasn't really representative of the concrete laying on uh, dirt on the bottom side. So what we did differently. We moist cured all of the samples for 28 days and we started that moist curing as soon as possible. You can watch the other video to, uh, to see exactly how we did that. We mixed all the wet mix samples as dry as we could and uh, just in case that was an issue. And then we rotted those samples thoroughly as we put them into the molds so you'll see they did come out looking a lot nicer. On the dry pour, we packed the mix into the mold tightly. And this is to simulate, especially if you're using a vibrating screed tool that really packs the, uh, the dry pour mix into your, uh, into your framework. So we, we really packed the, the mix into the molds tightly. Uh, we also perforated the bottom of the plastic molds. This was to give the uh, dry pour a little bit better chance to get wet uh, sooner so we could get wet from the bottom and the top. Still, it's an eight inch tall cylinder, four inch in diameter. Uh, you really are restricting uh, how much water you can get onto your, onto your dry pour. So that may still be not totally representative. And then we did begin moist curing as soon as possible. And you can watch the other video to see how we did that. What we hoped to see or hope to learn uh, on this experiment, we wanted to see if we could get the wet mix up to or exceed the rated strength on the bag. And that would just tell us is our, is our quick crete really 4,000 PSI concrete? And we were able to achieve that. You'll see in these test results, our two wet mix samples exceeded 4,000 PSI. And then we wanted to see if the dry pour would also meet the rated strength. So if not, we wanted to see at least how close it comes. You know, is dry pour 50% as, as strong as wet mix or 10%? So what we did learn is, uh, like I said, we did exceed the rated strength on the wet mix. The dry pour again came in at one half of 
the strength of the wet mix. But in this case, instead of 1,000 PSI, it was 2,000 PSI. And I'll attribute most of that gain to the moist curing. So, what's this mean? That, that's up to you. This is just information for you to digest. There are a lot of videos showing, you know, arguing is dry pour as strong as wet mix and, and this and that. Uh, I have not been able to prove that it is. My Both of my experiments show that uh, the dry pour comes in at half of the wet mix strength. Um, without moist curing, half of the strength is one quarter of the 4,000 PSI uh, rating on the bag. With moist curing, I was able to get 2,000 PSI. Does this mean dry pour is a total waste of money, waste of your time? I personally don't think so. I think there are a lot of great applications where you don't need 4,000 PSI. For instance, for me, a sidewalk, a small stoop, a little pad to put a shed on, that type of thing that we've seen all over the internet, I think most of those applications are perfectly fine, especially if you moist cure and get to at least 2,000 PSI. I personally would not be parking cars on this, um, would not be doing a driveway, in my opinion. But there are a lot of applications for dry pour. If we come up with another way to prove that the dry pour slab can be stronger, we will continue to investigate this, but for now, this is this is what we've got. Both of my experiments show that the dry pour is half as strong as the wet mix, and if you don't moist cure, your wet mix is only half as strong as you think it is. Think we learned some stuff. So that's how that works. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, share, and we'll catch you next time on how that works with Hank Ball.